immunoglobulin G level was higher in uh, high weaning weight pigs compared to low weaning weight pigs, which means uh, usually ha uh, high weaning weight pigs were uh, had uh, greater birth weight, and then they might consume uh, more colostrum, and then high immunoglobulin G level was maintained until weaning. And then we also measured uh, superoxide desumatase and heavy weaning weight pigs had greater blood uh, superoxide desumatase levels compared to low weaning weight pigs, which means they have better antioxidant defense system. And then diamine oxidase and D-lactate level, which is gut permeability markers. So low weaning weight pigs had uh, higher uh, these biomarker levels, which means they had higher gut permeability, which means indicating they have some uh, gut barrier function issues. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, where we explore the science behind swine nutrition. I'm your host, Jorge Estrada, and today we'll continue a fascinating topic that we have been discussing with Dr. Jan from the University of Georgia. We have been talking about the weight of pigs at winning, and especially on those pigs that are in the lower range, what can we do to get them out of to a better start. So welcome again, and thanks for joining us. It is great to participate in this podcast. And you mentioned it before, you know, and it's about mortality and the effect, you know, that this could have the the, the, the weight of the animal at winning uh, regarding mortality. So going back to the biomarker piece, is there any relationship between these biomarkers and the health of the animal? Yes. So uh, in my study, we, uh, we had different winning group and measured these different biomarkers. And then I also uh, had correlation analysis. So firstly, between these two winning weight group, immunoglobulin G level was higher in uh, high winning weight pigs compared to low winning weight pigs, which means uh, usually ha uh, high winning weight pigs were, uh, had uh, greater birth weight and then they might consume uh, more colostrum, and then high immunoglobulin G level was maintained until weaning. And then we also measured uh, superoxide desumatase and heavy weaning weight pigs had greater blood uh, superoxide desumatase levels compared to low weaning weight pigs, which means they have better antioxidant defense system. And then diamine oxidase and D-lactate level, which is gut permeability markers. So low winning weight pigs had uh, higher uh, these biomarker levels, which means they had higher gut permeability, which means indicating they have some uh, gut barrier function issues. Uh, and then interestingly, uh, the blood uh, marlon dihydride levels, which is uh, lipid peroxidation marker, the, as an indicator of oxidative stress, there was no difference between low and high winning weight pigs. So this indi may indicate that winning stress may be similar across, uh, regardless of winning weight, but body development and then their uh, resistance to this kind of winning stress and challenge may be better in high winning weight pigs and uh, compared to low winning weight pigs. And then in the correlation analysis, we found that uh, with increasing winning weight, uh, superoxide dismutase level increased positively, and then diamine oxidase level decreased. Uh, and also, uh, the, the immunoglobulin G level increased with increasing winning weight. So there is this kind of uh, strong correlation between these blood health biomarkers and then uh, winning weight so that we can uh, predict how, uh, how stressful these pigs are after winning. And then we can, uh, find, uh, we can find some kind of nutritional need for these low winning weight pigs that are more susceptible to disease infection, post-winning diarrhea, and lower growth so that we can provide uh, probably more nutrients or some kind of uh, the tailored uh, nutrition for these pigs. So, and let's stay on the biomarker topic just for one more minute. Um, 
So low wind weight, and if you had to choose one of those biomarkers from the practical standpoint, according to your experience, which of them could be the one that you will pick in order to, you know, get a little bit of insights uh, for the future of that pig? That's a great question. So in my experience, uh, so they have oxidative stress a lot. Uh, so, but sometimes, you know, it's combined with other winning stress and we are looking at uh, gut barrier function and other like a microbiota, gut health issues. But I think we also need to focus on their oxidative stress and Marlon dialdehyde levels is very good indicator uh, that we can measure uh, oxidative stress. And then in my other studies, we found some kind of correlation between uh, blood uh, blood nutritional status uh, and the, these uh, oxidative stress markers. So I believe Marlon dialdehyde and other oxidative stress markers are good for good to measure to know their stress level and then when we measure gut barrier functions we analyze for example mrna expression of tight junction protein uh, and then we also do some kind of uh, the uh, lactulose and mannitol studies things like that but using this diamine oxidase and deloctate in the blood it's very commonly and widely used blood markers uh, in other animal species. Uh, and then uh, in swine nutrition studies, we use these biomarkers too. So just taking blood samples and measuring this uh, malon dialdehyde and diamine oxidase and deloctates are uh, probably simple and you know, low cost analysis to know their stress level. Wisenetics turns podcast airtime into brand authority. We don't sell ads, we elevate voices. Curious how far your voice can go to become a reference in the industry and attract more leads? Scan the QR code and discover how we can turn your expertise into unmatched brand authority. Let's transform expertise into influence, starting now. So, well, this is a nutrition podcast. Might as well, why don't we kind of close the conversation today Dr. Yang, with uh, what nutritional strategies do you think will be most effective to supporting those pigs uh, with low winning weights? Right. I mean, you you talk that a lot of them are going through a through a high, you know, oxidative stress. So maybe you can share with us some of the some of the findings that you have had with with your research. Yeah, with these findings, yeah, this is like a kind of uh, basic findings that we know there is winning stress and then maybe a more severe winning stress for low winning weight pigs. Uh, with my findings in these biomarkers, firstly, we need to provide some, uh, some of more uh, antioxidant related substance like vitamin E and vitamin D. We can use 25 hydroxy D3 as well. And as we found, it can decrease uh, malon dialdehyde levels in, uh, in nursery pigs and also some essential oil. Uh, those uh, kind of additives and vitamins and other trace mineral stuff can help uh, can help uh, pig lead reduce this oxidative stress. And we also need to look into uh, iron part as we are just putting iron, dietary iron, uh, iron in the feed, but iron and other trace minerals are usually pro-oxidant. So we may consider uh, to use organic iron sources or uh, use to iron dose and reduce dietary iron, iron levels in nursery diets. So we can use that kind of strategies. And then my recent study with medium chain fatty acid helped piglet growth uh, uh, very clearly. Uh, even though we did not measure energy status of these low winning weight pigs, but I am measuring this part in next uh, in the following trial, uh, but they usually have negative energy balance in the first week, probably up to second week after winning. And then we may need to provide a uh, very efficient and instant energy source for these uh, pigs. So medium chain fatty acid uh, and then uh, butyrate, uh, butyrate as well 
could provide instant energy source for uh, for body and also epithelial cells, respectively. So we can use this kind of lipid derived uh, organic acid sources for uh, to help these low winning weight pigs. And then finally, uh, functional amino acid would be a good choice to provide these low winning weight pigs because. Uh, with gut permeability issues, we need to look into their gut integrity and health. And then this functional amino acid can help these piglets uh, to develop their uh, the gut cells and other immune systems in the body. So uh, we can use a variety of nutritional strategies, but with my research, uh, this would be a great choice for these low winning weight pigs. All right, well, unfortunately, that's all the time that we have today. Dr. Yang, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for, uh, very much for this opportunity. Thank you.